And this is a common quant interview puzzle. We are given a fair coin that is head, tail, half, half probability. We try to get three head in a row. The question is, on the average, how many flips you have to do in order to see three heads in a row? All right. So today we're going to introduce some recurrence method in solving this problem. So in the first method, we're going to do the recurrence on the initial results. Right? You flip a coin, you could get head or tail. So if you get a head, good news, you get a chance to get three heads, right? But if you get a tail, then you have to restart. So if we are looking for some unknown value, we call it x. What is x? x is the number of runs to achieve h h h as the results, right? So this is a random variable. We try to see what is the expected value of that, right? So if x is the expected value, and you flip, you get a tail, you already wasted the one flips, and then on the average, you still need x number of runs, so you would need on the average. This is on the average. Now what is the probability that even is happening? That's one half of opportunity. So the probability here is one half for this to happen. Now, if you got H, that's good news. But then you're gonna have the second flip. In the second flip, you still have half and half chance, right? This is all half and half chance to get a hair or tail. If you got a tail, it's even worse than the first result because you wasted two flips. So in other words, on the average, you would need two plus x steps in order to get h, h, h. And the probability of this even happening is half times half, which is one quarters of chance. All right? Now, in this case, that's good news. You have two h, and you see a hope. You flip again the third one. If you get an h, congratulations, you got it. And how many steps you have done? Three. And this, of course, this event happens with probability of one eighth, right? And of course, if you got a tail, oh, that's miserable. You wasted three steps. So which means on the average, you would require another x steps in order to get h, h, h. So with this event happens with one eighth of probability. So with this, we have a recurrence relationship. All right, let's re recap. So here, depending on the initial results, right? Initial, the first one, the second one, the third one. And then we have this unknown variable, this expected value, you know, satisfies this, this event with different uh, probabilities, one, you know, one half. And this one is one quarter. This one is one eighth. And this one is also one is right so you you add it up how to solve this linear equation that's easy you know multiply it by eight you got eight x equal four plus four x plus four plus two x plus three plus x plus three and then this would be seven x oh, you get x here and then four four three three oh x equal fourteen that's the answer. Okay? In other words, by using the recurrence, we conclude that it takes about 14 steps in order to see H, H, H. Okay? With a fair coin. This is the method number one. All right. On the method number two, we're going to take a different approach. Now, think about it. In order to have H, 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 three H in a row, you must first have two h in a row. Without that, you're going to start over, right? So if you have two h in a row, and then you have another one, you get a chance, 
right? Now, similarly, in order to achieve two edge in a row, you must see the first edge first, right? So in other words, in any pattern you would like to see, in order for the pattern to happen, you need all the prefix substream to happen first, right? So in, for example, if we're looking for H, T, T, H, in order to see that, you have to see H, T, T first, in order to see HTT, you need to see HT first. In order to see HT, you need to see H first. All right. So we're going to do recurrence on the prefix of the pattern. So here, we're going to say some notation here. We're going to say RI, the average number of runs in order to see the first I prefix. In other words, here is the notation. In order to have three edge, you need to see one edge first. Let R1 be the expected number of runs to see one edge. Now similarly, R2 for two edge, R3, you can continue. You know, if you want to see 10 edge, that will be R10. You know, this would have, you know. Now what is the recurrence relationship? Let's think about it, right? So for the first one, okay? So in order to have R1, of course, you need to at least flip one time, right? So R1 would equal one. You, you need to do that, you know, to see the results. Now, if you have edge, you're good, right? You get one edge. But if you get a tail with half of probability, then you, on average, you need another R1 steps. In other words, this one, the recurrence is like self-recurrence. With a one half opportunity, you could tell and then either take another R1 steps for you to see the first edge. Now, similarly for R2, so R2 here, in order to have R2, you take on the average R1 to see one edge first. So you have R1, and then you have C1 edge, you need to have another flip. In other words, you need plus one. In this new results, if it is head, you're happy, but with half chance, you know, half of probability, you're gonna see a tail. In that case, it require on the average R2 to see 2H again. So the recurrence is that uh, with one half times R2, right? Now, you can use similar arguments in that in order to see R3, you need to see two edge first. On the average, it takes this much time, right? And then you need to flip again in a hope to get three edge, so plus one. However, you could tell with half of opportunity, and then you need to start over again. So one half, and then in that case, you need to take R3 steps in order to see three edge, all right? So that's good. So let's recap. So here in this case, yeah, R1 has equal to two, right? That makes sense, right? It, on the average, is a fair coin. On the average, you have two tries in order to see one half. Now, now for this one, let's rewrite it, right? So that is half of R2 equal R1 plus one, multiply two here, this will be two, is going to be two, yeah. So similarly, you can continue in general. You're going to have this recurrence. Okay. So how do you solve this sequence? That's easy. What you do is you change a little bit. You plus two on both sides, and then equal to r n minus one, plus one, plus two, and equal two r n minus one plus two that's a geometric sequence right that's good so the solution would be two to the n minus one power times the first term first term is r one plus two r one is equal to two so that would be two n plus one and then what is r n r r n would equal two n plus one minus two. In this case, we're looking for R3, the number 
f runs in order to get c h h h. So plug that in. Uh, three would equal two to the fourth power minus two. That's equal fourteen. Same answer. All right. So that's good. That's what we have. Okay. So as a reference, if you want to say ten has in a row, you need, on the average you need play two thousand plus times, right? All right, that's good. That's for the second method. Now for the third method, if you are familiar with what is called the uh, Markov chain, you know we're going to cover that. Now before we do that, I do have a a variant of the problem here. If we're looking for different pattern rather than H H S. What if we want to see this H H T T? How would you do that? All right. So welcome to leave a comments below to share your answers. All right. And I think um, you probably can use uh, this second method here uh, to get an answer. All right. So let's come to the third one. As I mentioned earlier, is recurrence with Markov chain. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with this concept, you probably Either stop this video or、uh, do some research about it. So Markov chain sometimes very easy to model certain events where I have a different state and there's different you know transitional property from one state to the next state, and also this key property that each state, the current state, and then the state of the next state, you know, only depends on the current state. Does not depend on history of it. You know, in other words, conditional probability of your next step, next state, only depends on your current state, not the history. It's called memory list property of Markov chain or Markov process. You know, so it's a very powerful tool、uh, in probability. But if you have not learned that, that's okay. All right. But if you do, let's try that. So here, the idea is that、uh, we're going to model the event with the Initial state, right? The initial state, the start of the game, and then、um, later you have a different transition function here.、Um, with this, like if you get a he head, you're gonna go to the state where there's one edge, right? If you have another、um, edge, then you go to next state, and then if you have another edge, you go to final state. This is a happy state. This is where,、um, you know, we. This is what we want. However, in every state, for example, if you got a tail, you're gonna go back to the to the original one here, because if you get a tail, you you're gonna restart, right? Because、uh, you are looking for H H H, right? So if you got a tail here, and you know you, you're gonna go back, right? So that's kind of a state transition diagram, and the number here would be the what is the probability from one state to the other state here, because the coin is fair, so each time. And it will have half a、um, chance to get head and tail, and you transition to different state accordingly. And also, is the memory list. Notice that,、uh, and whatever happens doesn't really de depends on your history of it, right? It doesn't matter you know, how many steps you have gone through to reach the starting state, right?、Uh, it only,、um, you know, depends on the current state, and then if you get edge versus tail in this case, okay. I'm gonna erase all that. So here, with this、um, Markov chain model of our game, we're going to have recurrence on what is called the D here. What is the D here? This is the number of steps you have to go through in order to reach the final good state or the accept state. And this is accept state or terminating state, right? So here. You take d zero here. We're gonna d one and d two. Now, of course, the number of steps we're gonna interest in is what is d zero here. So, what is the recurrence? So, notice that let's let's figure out the d right. So, each time you, this is your your ending goal right. So, you wanna get an edge. You're gonna proceed. If you get a t, you 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 know, um, you have to restart. So, with that, let's do the recurrence here. Yeah. I claim, and this is the recurrence. Let me explain why that is the case. For the first equation here, so you have half of opportunity to get a tail, 
in which case it takes and d0 additional steps with the current steps right you already wasted one flip but you get a tail right with half of uh, opportunity but if you advance to the next state uh, you got an edge with a half of ob opportunity here you would require d1 plus one because you already you already flip once right and then in that state it will take d1 to reach the final state okay so that's the first equation here yeah now the second equation is the recurrence on the d1 so on the d1 here we're saying that you could go back if you get a tail you go back and then if you go here unfortunately you take another d0 steps so for the d1 you're going to waste one step and then d0 but if you advance to d2 that's good right so you're going to put d2 plus one yeah so but if you are at a d2 here right the so d2 here um, it require you know one steps if you get an edge to reach the final state so is equal half times one or if you unfortunately you go back right you go back to d0 you go back to the starting state where you would require d0 to reach the final goal right so that's the recurrence and the eraser of this okay so this recurrence like this and how do you solve we want to solve for d0 we don't care d1 or d2 right so let's rewrite the equation here this would be equation and uh, you want to solve for d0 right so that's easy you plug in d1 to here right that becomes um 2 d1 yeah so 2 it will be 4 it will be 2 0 so 2 d1 would equal to 2 d0 minus 4 yeah equal d0 we want to replace d2 what is the d2 d2 is here half d2 would be half of that right so plus half of d0 plus 2 yeah and then plus 2 yeah this just the equation for d0 just solve it right so multiply 2 on both sides you got 4 minus 8 2 d0 this would be 4 right so that would be d0 yeah equal 8 plus 2 plus 4 equal 14 same answer all right good so it's consistent with the other two methods, but this one, we're gonna model the problem with a Markov chain, and then we're gonna define the recurrence on those uh, three numbers, right? So that's good, all right. So I think this is uh, an interesting problem, but uh, let's raise another variant of the problem, <laughs> that is, still we are dealing with fair coin, but here we're looking for either HHH or TTT. So how many flips on the average do we need in order to see either HHH or TTT? Okay, again, welcome to leave comments below and share your answers, right? So I'm curious to see how would you approach um, to solve this problem, all right? Now, before you do that, I would like to share maybe another approach to answer this question. So here is another um, line of uh, reasoning here. So let's say that even A is HHH first occurs, even B is pattern TTT first occurs, and C would be pattern either or. We're interested in this, yeah? So notice that uh, we already know the answer, right? For even A, what is XA is a random variable for number of runs in order for A to first occur. So the expected value of this, it would equal to 14, right? We saw it earlier. Now with TTT of by, yeah, because it's symmetrical, right? So the head, 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 and tail, tail, they're the same thing, right? So you would know that uh, the event XB 
would also equal to 14. Yeah, so think about it. What does it mean? So it means on the average, every 14 steps, you're gonna see H, H, H once. Yeah, because the game stops once you see that. Now, in the meantime, every 14 steps on the average, you're gonna see T, T, T. So in other words, when you think about it, on the average, every 14 steps, you're gonna see one TDT and one HHH. So for the event C, you're gonna occur in twice on the average, again, on the average. So which means we conclude that the expected value for XC equal to seven, yeah? Because on the average, you're gonna see two instances of that events for every 14 steps, all right? So the number of flips in order for us to see HHH or TDT is seven. Or now, in this case, of course, and earlier we have this, uh, um, let me see, the, for the consecutive uh, um, here, right? So if say what is the probability of edge yeah with with n or t an instance, the answer would be half of that, right? So it would be in in that case the if the event is is, is this one, then we would have uh, you know two and minus one. Okay? So that's uh and the solution, you know, of course and um, again, please uh, leave the comments to share um, your way of uh, solving this problem. I think this is a very interesting problem and it's a very common kind of quant interview problem. So it's just um, you have different methodologies. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. And please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.